out of movies, folks. Welcome to D-Lab Tubab Theater. Time to fix the chat. Hey, welcome D-Lab, everybody. All the way from California today, I've got a Fender Silverface Champ. And yep, that's a true Silverface, isn't it? Missing the faceplate, the owner took it off, sent it out to me for repair. This thing needs a complete overhaul. Let's look it over, I'll show you what it needs. All right, we'll start with the top side inspection. It's got the original power transformer, filter cap, and output transformer. Sockets also look original, but they don't look too good. Especially this one. There's some kind of white, maybe fungus, inside of that tube socket. And this one looks a little bit overheated. We'll take a look underside. The 12x7 tube looks fine. All right, let me flip it. We'll take a look bottom side. All right, we'll hit her at two angles. You can see the eyelet board has those old blue nasty caps on, they gotta go. This cap is leaking a little bit of wax out of the end, it appears. So obviously all caps need to be replaced. It's got the original controls and input jacks. There's the base of the filter cap, power transformer, and dial lamp over there. Spin him around. Somebody did install a grounded cord that may be factory, I'm not sure new death cap looks like and now here's where it gets kind of good remember that one socket I told you kind of looked overheated that's this one right here for the 6v6 and if you take a look if I can get my light here to help you out there's been a big arky sparky going on between these two pins and unfortunately that's the filaments and this is the high voltage coming into pin 3 of the 6v6 output tube so hopefully the little fight these two had didn't damage one of the two transformers. We'll measure those out before I go too much further. All right, so here's the game plan. I'm going to totally recap the eyelet board, check resistors. Looks like the bias resistor is pretty toasty. Both of these tube sockets have to be replaced, and luckily I've got the original fender type in stock. Okay, these are hard to get. I'm going to put a new filter cap in it. His tubes are good. I already checked those on my uh, tube checker. And we'll bring her up slow on a variac and see if it comes to life. Okay, we're going to start out by just making sure that our transformers are okay. So right now, I'm looking at the primary of the output transformer. So if when the arcing took place and it pulled some current, it would have just popped that thing open, okay? So it's fine. We'll make sure we don't have any shorts to ground. We don't. Next, let's make sure that the power transformer is working. I'm just going to go to ground, grab one of the high voltage leads, okay? Got my variac over here. And I'm simply going to bump the transformer, give it a little bit of output here. There's my high voltage. Good sign. We'll do the same with the filament line. We know it comes up here where the blast mark is. Now I'm just looking for the 6-volt AC, same deal, I'm just going to bump it, yep, she's there. And let's make sure that I've got the 5 volts AC for the rectifier tube, I'm sure I do. Yep, he's there too, good. So that tells me that the iron is okay in the champ, so we're safe to go ahead and start stripping out the bad components and rebuild it. All right, so the champ looks good. Transformers are all right, and that's the most important part because they're the most expensive items. So I've got my new Paul McCartney 3 CD that I'm going to be listening to, and of course, a little vino. So let's get to it. We're going to start out with the main filter cap. Here it is, McCartney 3. You guys got to get a copy of this. I'd like to keep it going, but unfortunately, I get blasted for copyright. So I'm going to start with the main filter cap here. Better kill that all together. I've gotten popped too many times. 
trying to uh, have a little background music not allowed I get it anyway we'll get this filter cap out of the way and I have the new CE distribution cap right there it's gonna go in so I'm trying a different uh, camera angle this time instead of having it overhead I've got it uh, on my stand here and it's just tilted forward so I put some little stoppers on there so it can't fall I thought maybe this would give you guys a better view okay so what I'm gonna start with is bending these tabs up on the old filter cap and yep I use my wire cutters to do it pretty much use these cutters for the entire operation they can handle it alright so the two tabs are bent up out of the place now I need to get these two tabs out of my way alright now we've got the two tabs that are soldered pretty tight to the chassis so I'm going to come in here with old Snozoramus a little solder on the situation to get the solder to move I'll get a screwdriver underneath of it hopefully bend them up yeah she's moving slightly wow all right there it goes okay so that one's up I'll do the other one I should be able to pop the cap right out Hearing the wife out there blasting away on the phone. This thing about female voices, I noticed. Doesn't matter where she's at in the house. She's talking on the phone. You can hear it out here. I got a door over there, but it's just a wood door, so it doesn't drown things out too easily. Alright. Okay. Put this down where it doesn't torch anything. And now the phone's ringing. It's great. It's usually how it goes, guys. Telephone is ringing. Okay, look at there. We're loose, but now it appears as though the phone is for me. It's Andrew. Oh, look at there. Okay. You there? All right. Well, so so I'm know. I'm on one phone and. Your mom's on the other. So, uh. You get one for Chevy. I know, exactly. So, you know what? You know what, Andrew? I'm gonna put you right inside of this amp that I'm working on. Huh? Yeah, you're sitting inside of an amp. Isn't that cool? Oh, nice. Yeah, so right now I'm trying to pull a filter cap out of a Fender Champ. And, uh. I'm actually. Ah, there it goes. All right. So it's out. It just took me being on the phone. Yeah, see, you're on the phone and people can hear you talking to me on YouTube because I'm actually videoing this. So don't say anything that you wouldn't want them to hear. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Good to have it up there. Yeah, man. So I'm uh, just uh, doing a little rebuild on a Silver Face Champ. And uh, I was hoping you'd call so that people could actually hear you, right? Oh. Okay, yeah. So everybody, this is my son, Andrew, the one that talked me into doing all that streaming stuff. I'm sure that's what we're going to talk about, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to get off of this, talk to him. We'll come back and resume with the repair. All right, the new cap is in place. Bend these tabs over. And we'll do like they did. We're only going to solder these two tabs back down. So I'm gonna line it right back up how the original was. We'll get her soldered in.
Let's nose around with Spec to the Rescue here. There she is in place. I use this alcohol, clean off the rosin the best I can. And she'll look just like she did originally. These uh, CE distribution uh, capacitors are really nice. They're expensive. They're about uh, know, 45 bucks or so. But you put one of those in, it's going to give you the same life that that original one did. I'm going to swing these wires back in place. So this cap is a 40, 40, 20, 20. Okay. So this section here is not going to be used. I am going to go ahead and fold my wires over. I really don't believe in just uh, poking them through the holes. I like to have a little bit of a mechanical connection. And there's plenty of lead here to make that happen. So I'll fold them guys over. My hands are probably getting right in the way. Sorry. All right. Remember guys, you just need enough solder to flow between the wire and the terminal. You don't need a massive glob on there, okay? You're getting the mechanical connection by bending the wire around the terminal. The solder is just your glue. All right, next, let's get these tube sockets changed. Especially this guy that arc loaded. So if you're careful, you can just pop these wires off and just let them hang out. Hey, they actually bent that lead over a little bit. You can let them hang out where they were. And then when you put in your new socket, they should be sitting in place for you just to swing right back into the pins. Come on. There we go. Yeah, some pretty massive arc welding. I wonder what happened there. I wonder if maybe uh, some contamination somehow got in there. I've never seen that kind of a failure on these fender amps unless, you know, something's been spilled in from the top. That does not appear to be the case here. So, it's pretty interesting. Thank God I've got these original fender top mount tube sockets. I've seen guys actually put in some from the bottom. It works, but the problem you end up with is this diameter sometimes does not match up. So some guys actually drill them out to get the new sockets in. So we're gonna keep this one original. There's a new socket in place, keyway faces just like the old original did. Give you a close up. If it doesn't go out of focus, you can see the arky sparky marks there. After I get the socket installed, then I'll remove this cap and transfer it onto it. So the wiring is in place on the socket. Make absolutely sure you get the wiring correct. If you have to, refer to your schematic, okay? So pin one's not used. 2 is filament, 3 is plate, 4 is screen, 5 is signal in, 6 is not used, 7 is ground, which is also the other half of the filament circuit, 8 is the cathode. Okay, So you can kind of physically trace those out, make absolutely sure they get in the right spot, because otherwise you could definitely damage your ramp. Okay. I've done quite a few of them, so I've got it memorized, but 
you know, if all else fails, you can take a look at the uh, fender layout diagrams, which are free online. And there's other people that are published drawings that you can refer to. Camera's in my way, but I don't think I got this guy in there too good. Here we go. All right. So the 6V6 socket is installed. I'm going to move over and do the rectifier socket now. All right, here we go. Initial power up of the champ. I've got the tubes installed, dummy load on the speaker output. The Beckman is watching the current through the 6V6. B and K is going to look at the high voltage. Audio generator is going to simulate the input. We bring it up on the variac. So if you watch a high voltage, you see that come up. We're only at about uh, 60 volts. Keep going here. There's no spikes in the current. Everything looks good. Now, if you watch the Beckman, you'll see the current coming up through the tube. There is about 110 volts input. We'll let that settle down. Everything is looking really good. You can see we're about 390 volts, but I'm not at line voltage. And look at that current, okay? I'll bring that down. Now, I'm going to plug it in direct. Let's watch our current. So we're at approximately 428 volts pulling 44 milliamps of current. Now if you look at your Weber bias calculator you'll see that's pretty high. should not be that high. It should only be about 30 milliamps at say 425 volts for the dissipation of that tube. All right. Now remember the resistor that I'm using right now is a 750 ohm resistor on the cathode. The stock resistor is a 470. So let's hook up a 470 and see what kind of current that you're forcing through that poor little 6V6. And then you'll say, hey, I probably shouldn't be using a 470 because I'm going to French fry my tube. All right, here we go. I'm going to plug it in. I'm not going to leave it in because I'm sure the current's going to go a lot higher than what we expect. Look at it. 56 milliamps. We are keep on going up. Imagine how hot your 6V6 is going to run at 60 milliamps of current. Okay. So back in the day when they designed these amps, 470 ohms might have been okay at 110 volts input, but now we're up around 124 volts on your line. So that boosts the high voltage. So the 470 ohm resistors are not acceptable anymore. It may be what was on that print, but things have changed, guys. So there's no way I'm going to put a 470 ohm resistor on the cathode of that 6V6. It's just going to destroy it in a short amount of time. So there's the 750 again. To tell you the truth, I'm not really too happy with 43 milliamps, but if we want to get some of that class A distortion, we do want to run it hard. So at this point, I think I'll go ahead and stick with the 750. But um, lessons learned, guys. We've covered this several times in the past. You're seeing it live. Next thing, let's take a look at the scope. We'll put a sine wave in it, see what we got going. So I'm going to swing this around. Swing her down. There's a the scope. Remember, I've got the leader generator hooked up. I'm going to bring up the volume. There she is. Let's crank it. There's a little bit of clipping. Looks good. There's my bass. Treble. I'm at about 1,000 hertz. Let's go to 2,000. Get a little bit, a little bit of break up there. 
So I'm liking that. All right, everybody. Timing is of the essence here at D-Lab. I'm running out of it, okay? So I don't have the opportunity to have somebody play this amp. But here it is. She's hooked to my dual 12-inch speaker cab. There's full volume. Dead quiet. And here is the input with the guitar. So she's working great, ready to go back to the customer.